title. On an overcast day here in Medford, Massachusetts, the Tufts Jumbos fresh off their fourth straight winning season under head coach Jay Savetti look once again to try and capture their first next NESCAC title. Standing in their way today is the most dominant team in NESCAC football history, the defending champion Trinity Bantams. Fresh off their third straight title, their ninth in total, there's no better team than any for the Jumbos to open their season with. Hello, everyone. I'm Trevor Russo on play-by-play, -play, joined by my partner, Max Goldfarb. Max, how are you doing today? Doing well. Good to be here for my uh, first football broadcast. Now, the last time these two teams met didn't go so well for Tufts. Started out good originally, but what happened to change the tide for the Jumbos in favor of the Bantams? So as you alluded to, Tufts jumped out to an early 14-point lead in that first quarter. 
Uh, but over the span of the second and third, um, the Trinity Bantams gave up 30 unanswered points, and Tufts could not really recover after that. Recently graduated quarterback Ryan McDonald had a productive day, three total touchdowns. The now returned starter of Trinity after, after an absence later on in the season, uh, Vizano also had a pretty solid day. And we'll let the Tufts Jumbos pep band do the national anthem. We'll be back in a second. As you were saying, Max, an early 14-point lead last year for the Jumbos, then gave up 30 unanswered points to this talented Trinity Bantams team. Now, one of the star players in that game, Max Trippers, he, uh, he totaled up a ton of yards on the ground both in that game and the season. But he is now a graduated senior off into the world, and that's going to be one of the things that the Trinity Bantams are going to have to grapple with is the departure of Chipperis, who was a phenomenal player, offensive player of the year last season. Certainly well-deserved. Um, so in limited action, we had their running back to Lockwood show some really great performances. Um, so we'll see if he ends up taking the mantle as their starting running back, and, and we'll also have to see how this largely new and fairly inexperienced uh, Tufts defense fares with, uh, with his presence. Yeah, and especially also the Jumbos have some pretty big losses on offense. Senior quarterback Ryan McDonald had a career year last season as a senior, but as he is a senior, he has graduated. In his stead is going to be quarterback number 12, Jacob Carroll, the senior. Although listed in the program uh, is an actual split, um, split position for the quarterback uh, between Jacob Carroll and Don Borelli. From an inside source on the team, he mentioned that, that Jacob Carroll is the starter, so we'll see if... Uh, if Dom's inclusion in the program here has any has any truth to it. New Trinity kicker Kimball Wainens is set to kick off back there to number 89, who is John Andre as he passes the 20 yard line and is up. He's got a decent amount of room now making the tackle is number 25 for the Bantams. That will be the safety, Matt Patry. And I would say great weaves from the return man. And I did see a Trinity Bantam, uh, Trinity Bantam player throw up his arms, maybe looking for a holding, uh, holding flag, but none was, uh, none was awarded. So here we have a nice return, setting up the Jumbos a great field position. Yeah, Jumbos on their own 37-yard line. Great starting field position for the first snap taken by Carroll. And he's going to fake the option out to Pedrini, and he's going to pitch to O.J. Armstrong for a gain, a modest gain of about actually no yards there on the play. It was an interesting pitch shovel pass idea uh, that seemingly could have worked out because the receiver was open, but uh, nonetheless, we have second and, second and ten. Jumbos are looking to the sideline now. It looks like uh, a couple of Jumbos players there are actually helping give the signals. So second and 10 on the 37. Armstrong in motion. They're going to give him the end around. He's going to rush 
for a first down and more. Armstrong breaking tackles along the way into Bantam territory. First two plays getting O.J. Armstrong in position now on the 44 of the Trinity Bantams. It was going to see him recover on that second play, get a little confidence and uh, work in an interesting play into the Jumbo offense. All right, actually that may have been premature and they're going to call holding on the Jumbo, so that's going to set them back a decent amount here. And it makes sense when you get such a gaping hole, the ability to rush for so much that oftentimes it comes at the expense of a little bit of a jersey grabbing, you might say. Yeah. Well, it's not going to set them back too much. Now it's only about a seven, uh, I think it's about a five yard penalty. So Jumbo's going to have a second and 14 on their own 34. Wildcat formation, couple of tight ends, Lyman in motion, Armstrong as well. And that's going to be 19 back to pass. Low pass to Pedrini. He's going to pick it up but not get anything there. Might have lost a yard. Interesting play call there. Trevor Woodson. Trevon Woodson, excuse me. So the Jumbos after that attempted trick play there. Gonna have a difficult situation. Gonna have Carroll under in the shotgun with Padrini. Now Carroll's gonna move under center here. And we're gonna see, I think, a, a timeout by Tufts. This early in the game, what are you thinking about that, Max? Looks like Coach Savetti might not have wanted them to actually line up an ISO formation, um, a very predictable running formation. And being at third and 15, maybe they were just trying to salvage some yards and make the punt a little more manageable. But, you know, against a team like Trinity that can very capably put up points, having been the leaders in points scored last year, it's with reason that Coach Savetti might try to go for something that can more realistically get the first down. Yeah, of course, always want to be aggressive, especially against this Trinity Bantam team, one of the hallmarks of their offense, of course, trying to control the clock, get rushing yards, and make sure that you don't have the football. And especially with that, uh, that defensive line rearing up for the Trinity Bantams, one of the best in the league, of course. It's going to be difficult. Of course, all new offensive line this year. No starters returning for the Jumbos. And now on third and 15, they move into the shotgun with Pedrini in his left. Brendan Dolan, the junior, out to his right. Under pressure. Carroll's going to run. And he is going to get walloped around the 40-yard line. Helmet of number 35, Robert Levine, the outside linebacker. Took him down, but there's a... There's going to be a flag on the play. May have been a holding call, you might think. Yeah, they're going to pick up that flag there. And the Jumbos are going to have to punt. So a bit ironic that, uh, as they seemingly might not have wanted to run it there, having taken that timeout, they ended up doing the same thing, having Jacob Carroll scramble. Got a bit of a decent game, but nonetheless, they will punt to the Bantams now. Yeah, and that does not look like the listed punter, Matt Allswanger, out there. We're going to try to get you to who that is in a quick second. Devontae Reed returning here, calls for the fair catch. It's going to be around the 25-yard line, so decent starting field position. But interesting that Allswanger, the uh, listed punter on the roster today, is not going to take, uh, take punts, of course. Uh, last year's punter and strong safety, Alex Lapiana, actually free safety, he graduated, of course, so the Jumbo is in need of a new special teamer. From what I can remember from the warm-ups, I thought I saw number 98, Patrick Wells. I'm not sure if he was the one who sent off that punt, but he seemed to be the one practicing. So yeah, that maybe was, a late switch. That's the freshman, Patrick Walsh, out of Concord, Mass. And it looks like he's actually going to be the new Jumbo punter this year, all things considered. And now it's going to be a read option going to... Number 28, Spencer Lockwood, the sophomore, who starred as an RB2. And once again, it looks like 
We're going to have a little bit of an error here. It's not going to be the listed quarterback, senior Jordan Vazano, out. Instead, it's going to be NESCAC Rookie of the Year, Seamus Lambert, taking snaps for the Trinity Bantams. And it makes sense. Lambert started in the last four games of the season, helped them secure the conference championship. So I guess he'll be looking to build off his freshman sensational season to, uh, to another solid one. Yeah, uh, that's going to be, one. I think they're actually going to call encroachment on number 97, Connor Chepnick. So it's a first and five for the Bantams on the 30. Lambert calling for the ball, hands off for the zone concept to Lockwood, and he's going to get a bunch of yards there and a first down as a light drizzle begins to rain on the crowd here. There was a bit of scheduled rain for this afternoon. Not much. It's just going to be a bit of a light light drizzle, of course, so we won't have any problems with the game, I don't think, but it will be interesting to see how center Kyle Woodring for the Trinity Bantams is able to snap that ball. We'll look on later, see if that causes any issues. First and like 10 on the 40. Blitz coming for the Jumbos. Yeah, they're going to bring five. Field. That's going to be incomplete pass intended for Jonathan Gerard. So smart of... Uh, Smart of the sophomore and Lambert to try to get the ball out fast, but unfortunately Gerard could not hold on to it. Sorry, incomplete. Rain's starting to come down a little harder here. A couple of Jumbo fans heading for the exits. Or at least cover for the time being. There's going to be an end around for Devontae Reed. He's going to get to the outside, but good tackle there by the soft, the uh, the junior, excuse me, Michael Maghetto, the hard tackling man out of uh, Verona, New Jersey. We were talking about this, a lot of New Jersey guys on this jumbo team, and around the NESCAC especially. Absolutely. Verona's actually a town over from where I went to high school in Montclair. So. Really? Third and three on the 47 for the Trinity Bantams. Picking up, will put them in jumbo territory for like the first to time today. A cover four right here, back it off. See how Seamus responds. And that's going to be a first down complete to the wide receiver, the leading man, Jonathan Gerard, a 1,000-yard receiver for the Bantams last year as a sophomore. Eight touchdowns. We we're talking about this. One of the keys for the, the Bantams, especially with Chipperis not there anymore, is going to be the tandem they have with Jonathan Gerard and senior wide receiver Kobe Schofer. First and 10 on the 47. Handoff is to uh, uh, Lockwood and he's gonna be brought down for no gain on the play. And a pile up of blue and gold eventually goes in the blues favor. So we get a, we get a second and 10 now. And of course, a name that you'll hear often throughout this game, Greg Holt, number 54, the all-conference man for Tufts, making the tackle. He is one of the leading tacklers in the NESCAC and has been for several years now in his senior season. Leader up the gut, making it happen. Drops back to pass, and that is caught and dropped for a loss. That's going to be the new... That's going to be number 20, Tyler Scales, making the tackle for a loss. On Devontae Reed, and it's third down and 12. The jumbo crowd, despite the rain, is still in it, especially looks like these corners are making things happen. Secondary playing well so far for the jumbos. Not afraid to get up and make that tackle. Let's see how they respond on this third and 10. Lambert back. Got a lot of time. He's going to be flushed out. He's zooming in chase. He's got a lot of speed, but he's going to be brought down. Excellent tackle there by Brandon Jones, the sophomore. So it looks like Lambert isn't afraid to use his wheels. He certainly has them, so we'll see how that factors in later in the game. But for the time being, we get... And it uh, looks like the punting unit is going to be on for the Bantams. Back to punt is Ian McDonald. So not choosing to go for it early on in this game is Trinity. We'll see, what kind, of, we'll see what kind of backspin uh, Hunter can get on this ball. Tough. That's going to be a bouncing punt, and it's going to 
It's not, actually, yeah, that's going to be a touchback. Almost saved by number three, Nicholas Green, the sophomore linebacker out of Darien, Connecticut. But ultimately, a really positive gain there for the Jumbos. The one thing that McDonald could not do was punt that back into the end zone. Almost turned into a sensational play, but not enough. And really not going to flip the field that much. So we'll see if that fourth down lack of conversion has any effect, but it's going to be a handoff to Padrini, and he's going to muscle his way for about six. Good gain on first down for the junior running back. Padrini, of course, 400 yards on the ground last season, but with the same amount of carries as Fifth-year senior now running back uh, Dom Borelli put up much better numbers, 4.9 yards per carry. He's going to hand off to Padrini again, going to find a lot less room, and that might go for a loss. So yeah. you see not much ground being able to be gained uh, in these running plays, kind of just going up the gut, running into a wall. So we'll see maybe they try to bounce to the outside and switch it up entirely and throw the ball. Yeah. One of the matchups that we outlined in our pre-production meeting was this Trinity defense, this defensive line versus the new look O-line. Going to be a battle we're going to watch all day today. Third down and five for the Jumbos on the 35. Carroll back to pass. He's going to be flushed on his feet. Going to fire over to Armstrong, and he's going to pick up the first down and more. Yards after the catch for Armstrong down to the 42. O.J. Armstrong making his presence felt early. And really heady signaling by Carroll as he was busting it to the outside there to the right. Kind of gave a little kind of gave a little finger to Armstrong. Oh, to there's get a open. flag. There's a flag on the play. I think they're going to call holding on that. Looks like uh, Carroll had a little too much time in the pocket. I think that's the second holding call we've seen on the Tufts Jumbos O-line today. That's correct. Impressive that Carroll was able to shake off a potential sack, but... Uh, because he got so much space, it begs the question of how he how he actually got that. So. Yeah, it seems like Carroll has a lot of mobility, something that's been a trade in Tufts quarterbacks over the past couple of seasons, if you remember Ryan McDonald. The leading rusher, of course. Makes sense. Take the handoff, and he's going to be brought down for a sack. Of course, the leading man, James Cristiano. First team all NESCAC for the Trinity Bantams. Seven and a half sacks last year, 11 tackles for loss. This is the player on defense to watch for the Trinity Bantams. So on that third down, the rookie offensive line of the Tufts Jumbos versus James Cristiano, James Cristiano won. Yeah. They're going to have to find a way to maybe double team him or something because he might wreck this game if the Jumbos aren't careful. Walsh back to punt. It's a short one, but a good hang time there. And it's going to bounce and be picked up by number 23, Josh Fallenweider out of St. Augustine, Florida. Of course, the weather a little nicer there, and Trinity Bantam is going to have a nice possession here on the 41 of the Jumbos. So actually, right about where they punted the ball, they get it right back with a little better field position and a new set of downs. Lambert in the pistol now. And the D-line ready to go on first and ten. Second possession for the Bantams. They're going to fake it, and over the middle it's caught. That's going to be, of course, Jonathan Gerard picking up the first down. Great look across the middle as the, as the defensive backs of the Jumbos were backed off. He threw an underneath pass and was able to connect well. 12-yard reception for Gerard. Lambert back to pass again, and that's going to be a little wide and low for Gerard, running that out route on the side around the 15-yard line. Jumbos only have three back. Looks like they're going to play four linebackers here in that 3-4 scheme. High snap is going to go to Lockwood. 
Missed the tackle there, breaks another one, and he's going to get to the outside, and that might be a first down. And they are going to, I believe, move the chains here. It looks to be a first down, and yes, it is. So a combination of solid blocking and a couple of missed tackles gave, gave Lockwood and the Bantams his first down. Yeah, Lockwood was with his first big carry here on the day, I feel like. And now it's a new set of downs on the Jumbo 19 in the red zone now for the Bantams. Lambert in the pistol again. A little bit of early movement. And Lockwood is going to gain two on that play. They're certainly getting a lot of work in with Lockwood early on, hoping to establish the run game. We'll see if, uh, we'll see if Lambert pulls any... Pulls any pass to the end zone sometime soon. Of course, last year, the uh, Trinity Bantams led the league in rushing attempts with 409, well, only taking 234 pass attempts. Lambert in the shotgun on second and eight. Reed comes back, split. They're going to hand off. No, it's going to be a fake to Lockwood. He's going to throw, and that's complete to number 12. Kobe Schofer, the senior wide receiver out of Northbridge, Mass. Of course, that one-two combo there, and now the chains are removed away. It's going to be first and goal on the eight for the Trinity Bantams. Of course, you have a little bit, a bit of inexperience there in the Jumbo secondary with, uh, with Brandon Jones starting his first game today as a Jumbo. Give him a shine through. That's going to be Lockwood rushing for a couple, and it looks like he's going to grab about two. Now, you had a good jump by one of the defensive linemen of the Jumbo, so... That contributed, I think, to what ended up as a meager, as a meager game. Second and goal from the six for Trinity. Lambert in the shotgun again, not trying to operate him under center. A lot in this game so far. It's going to be Gerard in motion, and that's going to be caught and brought down on the tackle is number 29, Joe Samuelman the third, the senior. He's listed as a tight end now, was listed as a fullback before. There is some discrepancy in the in the program of today. He is listed as a fullback, so as a versatile player, you could say. Yeah, first team all-conference as well. I mean, we're gonna say that over and over again with this Trinity Bantams team. Read in motion. Trips to the left, Reed inside, and Lambert is going to take it himself, and he's going to be brought down. That's going to be number 95, Tom Baker on the tackle. Great red zone stop for the Jumbos. Except are they going to go for it on fourth down here? Trinity on the four-yard line. Very little movement on the Bantam sidelines, so it looks like they they might very well be going for it. I think they're going to go for this. Get a touchdown early in the game. We first, actually, they're going to take a timeout to think this over. Is Trinity? So, Max, what are you seeing that the Trinity Bantams are doing better moving the ball than they did previously? I think they're staying committed to their ground game. They know that is working out solidly for them. Lockwood is a good back, as as was evidenced by his performance last year. So. I think mixing it up, being creative with it, going down the gut sometimes, pitching it to the outside has contributed to a lot of their just sustained success, moving the ball um, little by little down the field. Yeah, of course they've got Coach of the Year, uh, Jeff Devaney over on the opposing sideline. Won it for the fourth time last year. And of course we know how good this program is. We can't say it enough. There's, you know, there's dynasties and then there's what Trinity's doing. It's Actu true. Yeah. Actually, 
won for the first time on head-to-head -head records last year. That's never happened for any team in NESCAC history as they tied with Amherst for an 8-1 record. But now, Trinity on the Jumbo 4, looking to punch it in. Lockwood to his right, Lambert calls for the ball. He's gonna go over the middle and that's caught for the touchdown. That's gonna be, of course, Jonathan Gerard with his first touchdown of the year and the first touchdown for the Trinity Bantams of the year. Just went over and got it with that big body. You'll probably be seeing a lot of, a lot of um, Seamus to Gerard connections this season. Yeah, and that's not going to be listed kicker JP or Kimball Winans. It's going to be JP Dalazem, the freshman out of Oak Hill, Gainesville, Florida, man. The extra point is up, and it looks to be no good. Wide right on his first extra point attempt for Dalazem. And I believe that was somewhat of a problem for the Bantams last season, mix it, missing some extra points at what potentially were key times. So we see that here, um, not giving them a, a 7 nothing lead, but rather a 6 nothing lead. 6 nothing lead still. Nothing to laugh about. 2.47 left in the first quarter. So this year, it is the Trinity Bantams who strike first. John Andre, the sophomore, is back for the Jumbos. He's out of Needham, Mass, which I am not sure if that is around here. I'm not really super familiar with state geography. I believe it is. Can I count on you for more Massachusetts town locations? I honestly have no clue. I have this geography nut side of me, so you can, uh, you can land on me for it. Yeah, so it looks like for the Bantams, it's going to be Winans kicking off, and it's going to be Dalazem kicking the extra points and field goals as it's a high kick back in the end zone. And, of course, John Andre going to take a knee there. Uh, big change that we didn't really see a lot of last year because teams like to take it out of the end zone in the NESCAC, but... If you kneel anywhere behind the 25-yard line, it actually automatically, if you call a fair catch, it'll go up to the 25-yard line as a touchback. And that was, of course, created as a rule in D3 to try to prevent injuries on kickoffs, which, as we know from the NFL and college football, is the most dangerous play. First down and 10 from the 25 for Carroll, empty backfield going to fire it and it's going to be tipped at the line incomplete I leave that was done by nose tackle Hassan Azim so that will result in a second and ten and going back to the the kickoff issue I believe this rule if it did originate in D3 has now been applied to the division one game um, so again a smart rule for for safety uh, for safety reasons second and ten of course for the jumbos Fake the end around, and that's going to be a screen out to Armstrong. Not going to pick up much, maybe about three on the play there. And because the Bantams were so pressed on the receivers of the Jumbos, they were able to get to Armstrong pretty quickly and prevent a sizable game. New man in the backfield right now, the senior Andrew Sanders. Out of Bernardsville, New Jersey. Out to pass protect. Good pickup. And that's going to be deep for Frank Roche, but it's over his head. Could have had a touchdown there, but a little too much oomph on that pass for, for Carroll. And it's going to be punting time for the Jumbos. But a nice play design. He almost had it. I believe Roche exploited the one guy who was on press coverage in that cover three. Nearly had it, um, but Carroll just overshot him by a little bit. Back to punt, of course, is Patrick Walsh. Standing on his own 14-yard line. Trinity coming Gets after it away, him. almost blocked. That's going to be a booming kick. It's going to go over the head of Devontae Reed. And actually, what it seemed almost like a disaster for the Jumbos tends, ends up being a great play as they get it around the 20. 
As you know, inside the 20, one of the big metrics for punting. And it looks like that ball might be a hair behind the 20, so tally up another inside of the uh, inside of the 20 punts for, for Walsh. Yeah, he's going to like seeing that on his stat sheet as it's going to be first and 10 from the Bantam 20. Almost blocked there by Nicholas Green, the sophomore linebacker. That would have been a great play, and they would have had it deep in jumbo territory. But as it stands, back in Bantam territory, as they're going to motion a bit of a tight set here. Handoff is to Lockwood. He's going to try to get out of way. And, of course, Greg Holt there on the tackle, sniffing it out. That's going to be a loss of one for Trinity. Holt and the rest of the front seven really kept formation well and were not phased by what would have been confusion in that very strange formation. Yeah. Greg Holt is no stranger to tackles, had 72 last season. Always been up there at least in the top three, past two or three years, hoping to do it again. And now he's up to his third tackle of the day here, just in the first quarter. Looks like we almost had a, yeah, that's going to be a bit of an encroachment, but looks like going to be Lambert running for a ton there. Gets to the 40-yard line, huge gain for the Bantams on the QB run there. Yeah, it, it looks like we had a... Defense, number 54. That penalty is declined. Result of the play, first down. They're going to call Greg Holt for the offsides there. I didn't think that was Greg Holt. I thought that was Tom Baker. I don't know what you saw there. but Pretty rare to see a linebacker going offsides um, in that type of play. Uh, but nonetheless, it, uh, it gives them even more yards here. So we set up first and 10 at the 41. Empty backfield set for the Bantams here. On their own 40. The motion read in. Fake the end around, and they're going to option. Good gain there for Lambert. Going to get up to the 49-yard line for a gain of eight. Smart with, do, it's smart, it's smart with the uh, what the Bantams are doing with Reed. He's already established himself as a speed threat. Um, so using him as a decoy for what ended up being an option for Lambert was a, was a good course of action for Trinity. Uh, Devontae Reed, only seven catches last year, but as he's showing today, he's got speed. Second and three now for the Bantams. That's going to be Reed again. He's going to be brought down for a loss. Going to be a loss of three on the play. And they're going to pick up number 15, Robert Jones, the safety for that tackle. Great awareness from the veteran. He purely muscled Reed back nearly to the line of scrimmage. It'll be interesting to see where they, where they mark this ball. That's actually going to be the end of the first quarter. The Trinity Bantams lead the Tufts Jumbos at home 6 to nothing. And while we got some time, I think we could probably go over our three keys to the game for each. So, for Trinity, what do you think they have to do here in order to win this game? So actually going back to the, the, the matchup that we discussed last season between the Jumbos and the Bantams, um, Max Chipperis uh, was the leading rusher of the game with a whopping 164 yards. So, you know, we kind of thought, it begged the question of who would be replacing that production, I mean, through this first quarter. Uh, it seems like Lockwood has been more than capable, certainly contributing for a lot of the reason why the Bantams marched down the field and scored that touchdown. And for Tufts, what are we really seeing them need to do, and what have they done so far to fulfill that, of course, in a bit of a deficit here, but not too bad? Yeah, so I think they you know, just need to get their offensive linemen acclimated, uh, build some confidence generally around that offense, and you know, hold their own on the defensive side of the ball too. They have some leadership there with Holt, so it's looking promising. Yeah, good tackling today from the Jumbos. Just need a little better coverage. Third and five for the Bantams. A lot of time here and gets a hold of him. A lot of tackles missed and Kisumi's going to bring him down short of a first down. Going to gain be a gain of four on the carry for Lambert. He's really looked like he's taken off to run. Broke about two to three tackles there, but Kisuming, a leading player on this defense now for the Jumbos now that 
Senior Matt Ashler graduated last year. And they're going to bring out the punting unit here. To think you could break so many tackles and still not get that first down. Pretty amazing, but smart play by the Jumbos to stick with it and, and Kisuming to get that tackle. Ian McDonald now back to punt his second of the day. That's going to be a high one, and looks like they're going to let that go out of bounds. And I believe the the 11, no, the 16 yard line, excuse me. So good punt there by the veteran senior from Avon, Connecticut. Another inside the 20 punt. I don't know why. I'm a big fan of punting statistics. We, uh, my fantasy league this year, we added punters. So I've got to start, you know, trying to recognize the signs for what makes a good one. Mm. Simple stats. Get it, get it within the 20, you're good. Big to Pedrini. That's going to be a long pass there, and it's going to be caught by Jiho. No, excuse me, by Brendan Dolan, the junior. Huge reception for the Jumbos. And Carroll putting the touch that he needed on that pass. He missed on the last deep ball. He got it there. Brendan Dolan following in his brother Jack's footsteps there. First and 10 on the 40. Back to pass is Carroll. Now he's actually running. He's going to throw on the run to Armstrong. He's going to break a tackle on the sideline and get out at the 18-yard line. The Jumbos picking up chunk plays. Two, two 10-plus plays here to start the drive. I like this rapport between Carroll and Armstrong where he feels confident rolling out and looking to him uh, on these short passes that end up going for a lot of yards. That's going to be a handoff there to Pedrini. Not going to get much, of course. Trevon Woodson in there again. Freshman QB out of New York, New York. Actually went to high school in Louisiana. And of course with Carroll being a senior, you know, you want to see a lot of reps. Paul Campo, also sophomore quarterback. So trying to see who that number two might be. Carroll's going to roll out. Fire over the middle, that's caught by Roche. And he's gonna be down around the 10 yard line. Another chunk play for the Jumbos. They picking him up in bunches. Carroll fakes the handoff. Oh, now they go into a quick formation. Wildcat, no, not Wildcat, <laughs> excuse me. Under center here with Pedrini and he's gonna make a cut and gain a couple of yards there down to the seven yard line. So first and goal for the Jumbos. A nice jump cut by Pedrini. The no huddle, an interesting move. Looks like they might. Well. Pudrini actually uh, wore 25 last year, has upgraded to the number five after the departure of Alex LaPiana. Of course, want to get those lower and lower numbers. Absolutely, looking sharper. Low snap there, and that's going to be a flag. Might They're going to call false start. Do you see who jumped there? Or? I think it might have been either the center or the right guard. I'm just relying purely on peripheral vision there. Yeah, either Mark Mulvaney or Dylan Daisy, of course, both new starters. The third or fourth penalty on the O-line today, but they've held up pretty well for Carroll. Of course, getting a lot of rollouts, too, to get him out of the pocket. Only Cristiano, I believe, has recorded a sack in this game for the Bantams. Throws over the middle, and it's... Going to be incomplete, a little high and outside for O.J. Armstrong. Of course, good coverage there. Looks like Carroll was a little trigger happy as he sees himself getting close to the end zone. Wants to pooch in his first passing touchdown of the season. A good play there by Matt McCarthy. Wearing a different number today than this in the scorebook. Um, I have a little complaints about that today. Always but. keeping it interesting. A third and goal from the 12 yard line. Carroll back to pass, a little bit of a sidearm, and Pedrini's going to break a tackle. He's free for the touchdown. Mike Pedrini looked like he was down, but no, he broke the tackle around his foot, and the Jumbos have a chance to take the lead on the Dynasty Trinity Bantams with 11.50 to go in the first quarter. 
So just a simple flat Second route quarter. that <laughs> Pedrini was able to, you know, break a tackle out of and get that touchdown. It's as simple as that. You don't need to get too clever with it to beat these good teams. Al Swanger back for the extra point. The kick is spotted up and this one is good. The Tufts Jumbos take a 7-6 lead on the Trinity Bantams on Mike Pedrini's 12-yard touchdown reception and run. So as certainly is the case now and might be later, some points, as, as some more points get tallied up. We'll see if that, we'll see if that mixed, missed extra point by the Bantams ends up coming to haunt them. Yeah, missed field goals never, never a great thing for the opposing team. Of course, homecoming last year, the first game I did, had a 23-yard missed field goal by the Wesleyan kicker. That ended up being the difference in that game. So, of course, Trinity, a high flying and scoring offense. So we'll see if that is just a dent or a chink in the armor. Al Swanger back to kick. The left footed man spotting it deep. Good kick there. Reed is going to bring it past the 10. Trying to get to the outside. And he's going to be shoved out of bounds at the 25 yard line. So, equivalent to a touchback there for Devontae Reed. So we'll see how the we'll see how the Bantam offense can respond to to the uh, to the Jumbo's touchdown. I also want to give some props to the Jumbo cheerleading squad. Clearly, probably very cold right now in the rain. Try right, and wet. The Jumbo crowd that is getting a little thinner by the second. Understandable. Rain's been going on for a little bit now, but first and ten for the 25 for the Trinity Bantams. Lambert hands off to Lockwood. He's going to try the counter, and he's not going to get much there. Maybe a gain of two on the play for Lockwood. So again, impressed by the aggressiveness of the Jumbo's corners to then step up uh, and contribute to that tackle was, uh, was Jason Adonsi. In the shotgun again is Lambert. He's going to hand off again to Lockwood, and he's not going to get much again here. It's going to be a two-yard gain. Actually, they're going to give him three yards on the play. Sets up a third and five on the 30. And this would be huge for the Jumbos to get a third and out and be able to get the ball back, likely with decent field position. Uh, Tyler Scales on the tackle. Good stuff from the Jumbo linebackers and corners all day, save for that touchdown by the phenomenal Jonathan Gerard. But big spot here for Lambert in his second year. Dropping back, going to fire over the middle, and that's going to be slipped. It looks like that wet turf is going to play a bit of a role as Devontae Reed hits the pay dirt. Actually could have been an interception there. I didn't see who was uncovered. I think it was Maghetto. But fourth down, and it's punting time for the Trinity Bantams. And as you could tell in that last play, Lambert was really challenging the secondary of the Jumbos in cover, in cover three, back a bit, uh, still went fairly deep and almost resulted in the pick. McDonald back to punt for his third of the day, I believe. Of course, back is John Andre, and that's going to roll out to the 28 yard line. So that one not in the 20, but still really good punt nonetheless. I think that's around like 40 yards, or at least 40 yards for uh, McDonald. Right, that's the kind of distance you like to see, you know, even at the Division One NFL level. So impressive punt for sure. Yeah, they're gonna mark that at 42 yards. So average of around 40 for McDonald, which for a D3 punter is really good. 
First and 10 from the 28. They're going to hand off to Pedrini. And he's going to muscle his way for about four on the carry. So you've been seeing a lot of scrum type runs by the Jumbos. And, you know, they keep this up a game like that. They, you know, they could end up having a pretty decent drive. Looking to the sideline now. Sanders in for the Jumbos as well as Padrini. Not seeing a lot of Dom Borelli today. Actually, I don't think we've seen him at all. Padrini going to cut back, and he's going to get the first down. Great carry for Mike Padrini. Down to the 43-yard line. Picking up the first down. He sidestepped well and was able to exactly get the Jumbos a first down. And we were talking about the differences between Borelli and Padrini, and one of the things we highlighted was well, Padre, Borelli is more of sort of a north-south, you know, bowling ball type runner. Seems like Padrini's got a lot of cut to him. Certainly on display on that last play. Under center is Carroll. Padrini behind him, and they're going to hand off on the end around to Armstrong, and he's going to slip. So this rain which we thought was going to let up a little bit, is starting to have a big impact so far. Negated a possible reception by Devontae Reed, and now Armstrong hits his butt on the ground. And it was really a great read by, by safety number 25, Matt Patry, who came down um, out of his normal position and made that tackle, zeroing in on, on Pedrini there. 8.30 left to go in the first half here. Second and 10 from the Jumbo's 43-yard line. Going to hand off the weak eye there to Padrini, and he's going to pick up about three. Get a bit of a scuffle between, uh, between some of the linemen of Tufts and, and uh, the linemen of the Bantams. So we'll see how that animosity brews as the game continues. Yeah, and you got to point out the Jumbo O-line. Started off a little shaky, but it seems like all the reserve snaps they played in those blowouts is giving them a lot of confidence here keeping him in check so far third and seven Carroll under pressure he's going to escape the pocket and he's going to almost get the first down he's going to be a yard short and a big hit applied by number 33 Daniel Negron that was a wallop and I saw Roche on a nice slant towards the middle there but Carroll checked him off and just took it himself and ended up with a pretty nice game, so all well in the end. So they're going to go for it here. They're going to send out Trevon Woodson. Carroll comes off the field. Not sure if that's because of the hit or because of, you know, they want to try something different here, but might see an interesting play call from Savetti. Might see a timeout here with the play clock running down. Yeah, that might be what you're seeing here. Good call there, Max. And the Jumbos are going to take their second timeout. They've got one remaining in the half. So as you alluded to, it'll be interesting to see what happens on the next play, whether, um, whether Carroll comes back out or, um, or we see Woodson under center. Or if they decide to punt. Now, I'm an, I'm an Eagles fan, so... Of course, I'm a big fan of Doug Peterson, always really going for it in opponent territory. So I personally think they should go for it here. But what do you think, Max? I think they should as well. I think right, we find ourselves in a kind of weird tweener position where they're not close enough to try to kick a field goal. And, you know, they're not really far enough where a punt makes absolute sense. So um, if the uh, if the Jumbos are feeling a little risky... Uh, confident with the with the lone one point lead they have, maybe they'll maybe they'll go for it. Yeah, of course, Pedrini. Although the numbers don't say it, he's had a really really good day so far. So and maybe you roll the dice on fourth and one, just trying to barrel it with him and up the middle. It does not look like they are going to do that. They're going to instead send out Patrick Walsh to boot it deep. So Jay Savetti opting to take the safe route and try to flip the field here. No one back for the Trinity Bantams. Are they expecting a fake? Or are they just going to let it try to roll into the end zone? Interesting decision here. Might be going after it. They're going to punt it back. And it's going to roll out at the 13-yard line. 
So good punt there by Patrick Walsh. And that's going to be an inside the 20. Interesting that they didn't have a returner back there. Well, certainly the Jumbo's gunners did a nice job of getting down to that ball fast, but you never really know. If they had had a guy back there, uh, maybe as that, as that punt was uh, drifting towards the left, he could have just busted up the sideline. But we'll never know. And what we do know now is they're inside the, they're inside the 20 with kind of tough field position. Yeah, I personally thought that that kick didn't really have a lot of hang time on it. I think they could have maybe tried something, but nevertheless, the past is the past, and the Trinity Bantams are going to have it on the 13-yard line. First and 10 for Lambert, now down again. Lockwood to his right. Lambert under trouble, going to be flushed out of the pocket here, and he's going to lose about two yards there on the carry, of course, fo forced by Jovan Ninadovic. Ninadovic, excuse me. Good speed by him, forced, forced Lockhart to, uh, to the sidelines. Yeah, they're going to call that a loss of one. Uh, we've second and 11 on Trinity's 12-yard line. Lambert in the pistol now. Two to his left, one to his right. And a call for the ball and hand it off to Lockwood. Going to try to muscle his way and not really going to get much on that carry. Maybe a gain of one to bring it down to the original line of scrimmage. So it's going to set up a third and ten for the Bantam offense. And certainly with uh, six minutes and decreasing now, nonetheless, uh, it looks like the Jumbos will have plenty of time. If they happen to get this stop, the solid field position likely, um, certainly be able to get in a good drive. Schobert to the right, and Gerard to the left, I believe. Actually, no, yeah, he's to the right, he's to the left. Gonna fire it down the field, and it's going to be knocked away. Excellent play by number 31, Jason Nadonsi. That ball hang held up for forever, and it actually allowed Nadonsi enough time to close because Jonathan Gerard beat him deep. And it looked like Nadonsi had slipped because there was a good amount of distance between him and Gerard, but because of that massive hang time, recovery on that play was no problem. And now back to punt is McDonald for the fourth of his day. And pretty good so far with the leg. Gonna be Andre back deep. Not much of a boomer here and they're gonna tap it out at the 49. So the Jumbos are gonna start this drive in opposing territory. Great defensive play by Tufts. Of course making the closeout, not giving up on the play even though they were beat deep. And taking advantage of that, uh, the noodle there by Lambert. Absolutely. Sets them up with plenty of time, like I mentioned, and good field position to muster up a good drive. Carroll going to start this one under center. Roche to his left, the fifth year senior. They're going to hand it off to Padrini, and he's going to slip. And they're going to give him. I believe no gain, so second and ten. Third slip of the day by either team. So you wonder how the strategy of running the ball might change uh, with these field conditions to see if hmm, maybe Kara will try to air it out a little bit more, test that arm, or at least, uh, or at least yeah, try to keep the Bantams on their toes. Second and ten for the Jumbos. Going to drop back deep here. And off the hands of Armstrong, that's going to be a straight drop for the junior. And you see effects there again of the of the wet weather with that ball potentially being slippery. It certainly slipped right out of Armstrong's hands. Yeah, when this rain started up, we wondered whether it would have any effects, having a noticeable difference right now on this game. Also might make it a little more difficult for the quarterbacks to plant when they throw. Certainly. Third and 10, deep drop back again for Carroll. He's going to fire down the right side, and that's going to be, is that going to be caught? That's caught by Roche. And despite what I thought might have been pass interference with some grabbing on Roche. Oh, he's in a lot of pain. Roche was 
definitely contacted a significant amount on that play, and he is down. The helmet is off. He's on his knees. And the man who came back for a fifth year at Tufts try to help out this jumbo football team and just hope he's okay. I suspect it might be something that has to do with his legs. I mean, he was grabbed um, kind of in the lower area for that uh, on that throw, so we'll see. He's going to walk off, and he's going to be jogging under his own power, so a good sign for Roche. Gets a hand slap from Armstrong, but what a catch by Roche. I didn't know if that was completed or not, but a diving reception and a great throw from Carroll. Certainly worthy of the sacrifice. Great gain, and now they're in the red zone. And Woodson going to come on the field. Carroll going to come off after that beautiful ball there. And a bit of a trick play here. Armstrong is going to get the direct snap, and he's going to break a tackle and get down to the seven-yard line. A little bit of trickery here from Jay Savetti. Everyone lined up behind the center, and it was Armstrong who took the handoff. Why don't we call that one the Medford Special? Love to see it. The Medford Special? Where'd yes. you come up with that? I don't know, inspired by your Eagles, I guess, with the trickery. All right. All right, Max. But it's second down and four, I believe, for the Jumbos. Carroll back again. Going to fire deep to Donahue, and it's going to be too long. Jack Donahue, the tight end for the Jumbos in his senior season. Always put up solid numbers. One of the few returners, a uh, few returning pass catchers, I should say, for the Tufts offense. It's now third and four for the Jumbos. Need to get to the four yard line of Trinity to pick up the first down. Going to pass, it's gonna be knocked away. Pass intended for Armstrong. Good play to get his hand up there. Was number 25, the safety, Matt Patry. And we're gonna see the kicking unit come on, All Swanger going to attempt the field goal. That's going to be a 25-yarder for Allswanger. Should be a chip shot, but if this weather can have any effect, we'll see if uh, we'll see. Maybe this might not be so easy. Yeah, John Andre looks to be the holder, also the return man for the Jumbos on the day. Kick is not spotted. It's going to be either they messed up or he's going to chuck it to the end zone, and it's going to be batted away. I don't know if that was a, I don't think that was a fake. I think he actually mishandled the ball. Right, certainly as he was getting chased, we weren't under the impression that, um, that the rest of the jumbo players were prepared for any sort of pass. Yeah, did it look like confusion there? What, did, what do you see on that play, Max? I think so. I think it was a play that just broke down. I mean, he had meant to be the holder, um, but maybe poor reception of that ball um, coming out of the long snapper. Yeah, forced him to do that. Didn't seem to be any routes run by the Jumbos here. And an unfortunate accident. Mother Nature wreaking havoc right now. Forces, forces you to do things you might not otherwise. So first and 10 on their own yard line is the Trinity Bantams. They're going to fake the handoff. It's going to be Lambert going deep to Schobert. And that's picked! Interception for the Jumbos! Michael Maghetto with the first interception and the first turnover for the Jumbos. The sideline is fired up as Lambert threw into what looked like triple coverage. It certainly was. Maghetto was kind of playing a ball hawk role, monitored that one from what I could tell the whole way, and came up with a relatively easy pick. Michael Maghetto. Wonderful play from him. Getting big props from his teammates on the sideline on the bench here and just like that turnover for the jumbos and first play back turnover for the bantams low scoring game from good offenses here jumbos pretty much with the ball in the same position they got it last time we'll see what they do carol back to pass he's going deep to armstrong and he's gonna oh, oh. through his hands he had number 21, Jalen Weathers, beat 
but it slipped through as he had to turn his shoulders around to the left from the right, and that might have confused him enough to drop the ball. And certainly with the slipperiness of the ball, never helps. And we result now with a second and 10. Bit of contact, too, from Weathers. I don't think it was enough to inter to call pass interference, but I think it was enough to mix up Armstrong when he was tracking. Absolutely kind of made him lose sight of the ball, perhaps, as it neared. So second and 10, Pedrini going to take the handoff and muscle his way down for a nine, an eight-yard gain. Pedrini is showing a bit of bowling ball in him, muscling out those extra couple of yards for a pretty solid gain. Yeah, he's got some good cut, but he can definitely run up the middle when he needs to. And now a third and two situation for the Jumbos. A big one because I don't think they're quite in field goal range yet, but certainly with time ticking down, they want to make something happen. Yeah, definitely not in field goal range. Have to get at least to the 17. And Petrini, it looks like he's going to pick it up, spinning his way down to the 36-yard line. And he used the clump of three combined Bantam and Jumbo players to put on a little spin move and uh, secure that first down. Jumbos have 2.40 left to go. They have one timeout. The clock is running. And Carroll is under center, two to his left. Nice to see Roche back on the uh, near side of your screen. And Pedrini's going to get the carry. He's going to bring it down to, I believe, the 32-yard line. So gain of four for Mike Pedrini. Going to set up a second and six. Clock down to 2.15. 214, 213 and counting. And I like this strategy by the Jumbo, trying to wear the clock down by rushing the ball. We'll see if they can get points with just enough time to avoid the Bantams reciprocating. Carroll, a pass in the flat to Pedrini, and he's going to lose a lot of yards here. Going to be a loss of, I believe, three on the play. Tackle made by Ian McDonald, who is the punter. Man who can do it all. Do it with his legs, do it with his arms. Very talented limbs. So now third and nine on the 35 for the Jumbos. Back is Carroll going to pass in the flat, and he is leveled. Tackle made by number 52. That's going to be Alex Sladinsky. As is called in the hockey world, that to me was a hospital pass. One where Padrini was set right up to get to get clobbered, and did he? Yeah, going to be a loss of, I think, seven or eight on the play, and it's going to set up a fourth down, and we're going to see if the Jumbos call for a timeout here. And it'll be or Trinity calls for a timeout, of course. It'll be interesting to see how we look back to the end of this first half a little bit later on when the Jumbos had opportune field position after a deep in their territory punt two possessions ago and the interception just on this last possession that they were not able to convert. So we'll see if uh, hopefully the Jumbos can hold the lead and, uh, and turn their fortunes around to start the second half. Yeah, so that actually is going to be the Trinity timeout, of course. Jumbos would love to let that clock run with 141 left on the ticker, but going to get Patrick Walsh to punt, preferably get him deep. Apparently Devontae Reed back to return, I'd say. And unfortunate for the Jumbos that they had an opportunity to make this, you know, a, uh, I believe they get the ball back after halftime. So they could have had one of those two score two possession deals where you know the Patriots like to defer a lot so that they can get the ball back after the half and then score before the half ends. Walsh going to kick it back and that's going to be into the end zone for a touchback. So Patrick Walsh, not a great punt there, a little too long, but it would have just been a little less. I think they could have actually got around the five-yard line. So we'll see the two-minute drill, slightly less than that in action by the Bantam. See if they're, if they're really proving their stripes 
uh, being the three-time defending champs. Yeah, so, of course, J.P. Dolezem, a freshman, so don't really know any of his career longs. Of course, not being an experienced kicker and missing that extra point, you'd probably hope that they can get it around the 20-yard line to get it to his leg. First down and 10. Lockwood's going to cut it outside, and he's going to be forced for... I believe that's going to be a one-yard pickup by Lockwood. Tackle made by the safety, Robert Jones. And it must feel even more refreshing to have a short run game at this stage in the half with the clock ticking and only, uh, only one or two timeouts remaining. Yes, the clock is actually going to be running right now and down to about 1.07 for the Bantam, so losing about 40 seconds from the time of the Jumbo's possession to now. They're gonna run it up again, and not gonna get much. It looks like Trinity's just content to take this one at the half. Looks like it. Who knows, we could even see a knee on one of these next couple plays to avoid a real Jumbo possession falling. Yeah, third and four for the Bantams. John DeLuca named as the tackler there. And it's a sensible strategy. Obviously, the Jumbos have been holding their own in this game. So for the, uh, for the band to play conservatively, I can understand that. Yeah, Trinity on the play clock. Actually, Tufts is going to take a timeout here. I believe they're going to have 13 seconds to work with on the punt. So trying to maybe break one and provide a near miraculous... 14 to 6 lead, you'd think. Don't have any timeouts, so they can't stop the clock anymore. So maybe a little Hail Mary is a Bruin when the Tufts Jumbos get the ball back. See, what I'm thinking is that Al Swanger over on the sideline practicing his kicks. Of course, his career long is a 41, so they'd have to get to the 24 to match that. A lot of pressure now on John Andre to return this one in field goal range for the Jumbos. You can see they're bringing the heat to try to block that punt and get some points. In the oh, board. and they're going to jump. A little too antsy on that one. Actually, no, they're going to call false start on the Bantams. Looks like Trinity's the antsy one you were talking about. That's really not what you want to see if you're the Bantams because that pins you back even deeper. Now Trinity back on their own 18-yard line. McDonald down around the three. High snap, too. Going to get it off. Really good kick here. And they're going to fair catch that around the 41-yard line. So not a returnable ball for the return man, John Andre. And... McDonald's punt. Is fielded by John Andre. Of course, nowhere near field goal range right now unless uh, unless Alswanger's taken about seven rounds of steroids before this one. Hmm. Yeah, and if I were in the minds of Savetti and Carroll, I would just knee it here and go into the half satisfied with a with a one point lead. Yeah. Carroll coming out. Probably just gonna knee this one down here. Actually they're going under center. But so. it, looks, it what looks like a running formation, so. Yeah, they're going to, oh. oh, they're going to fake play action here from Carroll. He's going to launch it. He's hit as he throws, and that's going to be incomplete around the 30-yard line. So they went for it. They definitely went for it, but that's going to be the end of the first half. The Jumbos leading the defending champion Trinity Bantams 7-2-6. So after the half, we'll give you our first half thoughts when we come back. Of course, I think the pep band's probably going to do something around now. 20 minutes for halftime, so we'll let you get some, get some snacks, get a break, and we'll see you on the other side. This is Trevor Russo and Max Goldfarb on the call.
game on the schedule. You didn't think this score would be the one that's on the scoreboard right now, but Tufts is up seven to six at the start of the second half. Of course, two high-powered offenses, been a bit of a defensive struggle. A lot of yards, not a lot of points. Max, what do we need to see from Trinity's offense so far that we're not seeing from them? Yeah, so I think I, we need to see them, um, I would say, pass the ball more. I mean, their running game hasn't been super effective. Um, and, you know, they marched down the field pretty well uh, through their passing. They haven't really tested, you know, as we alluded to at the top, the, um, the young corners of the, of the jumbo secondary. And, and, yeah, on the defensive side of the ball for Trinity, um, I would just say, you know, they've been doing a pretty solid job. I mean, getting more bodies on Pedrini wouldn't really help. And, uh, you know, for the Tufts offense, I would say just run the ball, run the ball more. Um, you know, as you mentioned, um, they, uh, you know, it's been it's been a tight game. They really, frankly, in some ways, you know, weren't expected to be here. So let's let's keep that lead, and uh, you know, try to you know keep that good pace going. And for the defense, I would just say, stay more disciplined, um, both in a penalty sense and also in terms of securing tackles. Well said, Max. And we get start for this uh, second half of offense here from the Trinity Bantams, and they're gonna let the Allswanger kick go out of the end zone. Devontae Reed opting not to return that boomer there. And Trinity will start on their own 25 to begin the second half. We'll give you some first half stats from the first half, of course, uh, from Trinity. Seamus Lambert, Seven for 12 for only 29 yards, one touchdown, but one interception. So he has not looked like the rookie of the year he was last season. We'll see if he can pick up that form. Spencer Lockwood, 11 for 36. Seamus Lambert, seven for 35. And Jonathan Gerard, three for 21 and a touchdown through the air. Now we're gonna fake and that pass is complete for a first down to Jonathan Gerard. So add 10 to that three for 21, make it four for 31. And the Trinity Bantams have a new first down, actually gonna be a pickup of 11. So first and 10, and that's gonna be caught by Kobe Schofer. And just a simple comeback by Schofer, all wide open, really could have done anything in that space. and. And um, Lambert starts off his half well with that completion. And Second Lambert, completion. he's almost at his uh, entire first half passing yard total. So it looks like they're taking my advice. They're throwing the ball a little bit more. First and 10 from the 48 for Trinity in their own territory. Fake again, play action. Going deep is Lambert. And that is going to be knocked away. Good coverage there by Michael Maghetto and Brandon Jones. So first incompletion of the second half and that was intended for Kobe Schofer. Maghetto's really honing in that free safety position well. You know, the, the secondary can really trust that he be back there. I mean, he did it on the interception. He did it there to break up what really could have been a big play. Yeah, one break up, one interception now for Maghetto. Second and 10 from the same position, the 48 of the Trinity Bantams. Empty back here, backfield here for Trinity. Now going to motion, fake the end around, and Lambert's going to get around again. He's got the angle for the first down and more out at the 37 yard line. So, once again, you were talking about Jumbo's need to secure tackles rather than just flatten Lambert. Right, and Lambert showing his shiftiness there was able to, you know, kind of bounce off the uh, the sort of, I don't know, very jumpy play of the Jumbo's defensive line and pick up a, uh, a nice first down run. Spencer Lockwood back in for the Bantams. First and 10 on the 35 of Tufts. Trinity moving the ball very well so far on their first possession of the second half. Fake again, play action, and that's gonna be caught by Schofer, and that's gonna be a tackle by Michael Maghetto. 
but huge chunk plays coming from the Bantams. They're taking advantage of those two great wide receivers, Schofer and, and Gerard. And now they're in the red zone on Tufts' 10 yard line. No huddle, and that's gonna be a run for a loss for Spencer Lockwood. Loss of one on the play, so second and goal from the 11 yard line. But just as you said, they have not been effective through the air, and now they have. On this drive, 50 yards passing for Seamus Lambert, almost double what he had in the first half. And you see as Lambert plays with a little more desperation trying to get the ball down the field. I mean, he found Schofer on that in route with ease, probably the most amount of space a receiver has seen in this game. Schofer to the right, Gerard to the left. Lots of time in the pocket, and go. he's gonna go down. Too much time in the pocket for Seamus Lambert. And that's gonna be Kevin Kisumbing with the sack. Now, Trevor, I did see two other defensive linemen oh, in on get, that one. Got to get the get, big boys in. Could Tom you get Baker. a third of a sack? Is that is that a statistic? Can we make that a thing for precision? I think that's a half sack if it's assisted. So Right, oh. I've never seen anything more than a half sack, but well, it seemed like there were three on it. There's a jumbo down right now on the field. Jumbo defense down on the knee here. Tom Baker also being credited with that half sack, but looks like that's gonna be Brandon Jones, the sophomore corner, and he is going to be, oh, he's having a lot of difficulty putting weight on that left leg of his. Being helped off by two trainers. Team coming out to greet him. Yeah, having a really tough time. Walking a little less gingerly now, but I don't think we're going to be seeing him for a little bit now. And I think Miles Ship now going to be out for the Jumbos. And as you and I expected, Trevor, coming into this game, seeing Jones potentially in the starting lineup, certainly getting more playing time. Unfortunate that you, uh, that you see him walk off like this. Third and goal from the 19-yard line. Lambert... Going deep, he's going to the end zone, and that's going to be too far to the right for Kobe Schofer. And that's going to be fourth down on the 19-yard line. So that would be about a 36-yard field goal for the new kicker, J.P. Dallism. And although that was more of a miss by Lambert than um, a particularly great play by the Jumbo secondary, I... I applaud their p patience on that play to have, uh, to have caused that fourth down. Kick is spotted up and it is no good. Wide to the left. So that's a missed extra point for Dallazin and now a missed 36 yard field goal. So the Jumbos get the ball back. Trinity was driving. They stalled in the red zone. And finally, and finally Tufts gets a sigh of relief. And with this game being so tight, I mean, think of it. The, uh, the Bantams could be up by, by three at this point if those kicks have been made. That's true. Four points left on the field, although a 36-yard field goal at D3 is nothing to sneeze at. And we're going to see a flag and a false start on the offense here. Looked like a decent amount of movement. They're gonna get Armstrong for the jump there. Jumbos were seeing a lot of yellow early in this game in the first quarter. Cleaned it up around the end of the second, but first penalty there for Tufts. In terms of penalties, that's going to be Tufts' sixth as the handoff goes to Pedrini. Not going to pick up much, maybe a yard. Yes, yeah, so that's going to be... Actually, no, that's going to be five... No, uh, five penalties for 35 yards for the Jumbos. One penalty for five yards for Trinity. 
And it looked like there was a nice block there applied by Tyler, but not enough support on the end there for, for Pedrini to really get any sort of a gain. Yeah, so it's going to be second and 14 from the 16-yard line for Tuss. To set, he sends Armstrong in motion to the left. Fire down to Donahue. Actually, not Donahue. That's going to be to Brendan Dolan, excuse me, and he's going to pick up a good chunk there, about 10. And now third and four for the Jumbos. So they were in a pretty bad situation because of the false start. Now making it a manageable third and medium. And I like what the Jumbos continue to do with Armstrong, sending him out there on the screen as a decoy, left the middle open on that, on that uh, pass to Donahue. Deep drop for Carroll, and that's going to be complete to Armstrong. He's got speed down the left side, and he's going to be brought down, but a huge gain for Armstrong. Down to the 26 of the Bantams. O.J. Armstrong, when he completes it, when he catches the ball, man, can he run. Those beautiful yards after the catch, just as I was speaking of his speed, he put it on display once again. That motion setting him free too, definitely helped him get open in the, in the flat there. That tackle made by Matt Patry saved a touchdown. But now the Jumbos are gonna hand off to Padrini and he's gonna lunge his way forward for about four yards. Really good gain by Padrini. And helped by and helped by the Bantams playing lax coverage in that cover four, open up the middle, more space for Pedrini to get to that second level. And Jumbo's actually practicing some long snapping on the sideline here after you know, the missed uh, hold by Andre, and that's going to be another run to Pedrini, and that one is going to gain two, so making it a pretty good third and four situation for the Jumbo's. Right where they were back on that 48 yard reception to Armstrong. So Roche and Armstrong, the two leading receivers on the day for Tufts. Actually, not Dolan's the leading receiver, but Roche, the fifth year man. With that great catch right. earlier. And that's going to be a pitch to Armstrong. And he is going to be a little short, just one yard shy of the first down, which is at the 16. Now you got to think at this point, they should be in field goal territory, but maybe trying to seize on their momentum of the Armstrong long gain, they might, uh, they might go for this fourth and one. Going to be two yards shy right now, fourth and two, and they're going to leave the offense on the field. Personnel, Roche, Armstrong, and Dolan, three wide receivers. Pedrini in the backfield, Donahue also out there. And they're gonna fake, and that's gonna be Carroll himself taking it, and he's gonna slide down at the eight yard line. Jacob Carroll using his legs to get it done today, his fourth carry on the afternoon. Oh, but there's yellow. We're gonna see a flag. No wonder he got so open. We'll see what this results in. If this is on Tufts, it's going to be the sixth penalty of the day and might take them. Oh, no, they're going to pick up the flag. Actually, no, they're going to call holding on the defense. Huh. Uh, the ref might cut out right there, so we couldn't see who it was. But now it's going to be third, first and five. First and goal, excuse me, on the five. Great position here for the Jumbos. Carroll has been accurate. And Hetty, I mean, he had a chance to dish it out to Armstrong there, but to, to mix it up, he Pitched kept himself. to Padrini. He's going to try to find room, getting the cut, and brought down around the two-yard line. The three-yard carry for Padrini. That's going to set up a second and goal. And it was rare to see Tufts pitch to the outside there. Padrini has had a lot of comfort rushing up the middle, but nice to see that even around the goal line, they were willing to mix it up. I think Tufts bringing in an extra lineman. I saw left guard Nick Kranjic on the field. Yeah, they're going to go a jumbo set fitting enough. 
and they're going to give it to Pedrini. He's going to try to get his way through, and they're going to mark him short at the one-and-a-half yard line. So third and goal. An all-out trench battle this is probably going to be. So they're going to take off the jumbo set. Going to bring back on Dolan. And number 22, Andrew Sanders, who's sort of served as a third down back in this one today. What an interesting formation here. We'll see what they do. Double pistol. They're going to fire in the flat, and it's caught! Touchdown, Jack Donahue! His first touchdown reception, and that puts Tufts up by seven. Great job by Jacob Carroll to not try to throw it over in the corner there and instead take the safe play. He went for the out instead of the fade and it proved dividends. Wide open for six. Al Swanger on for the extra point. He can make it eight. Low snap, the kick is up and it is good. Al Swanger deals with the low snap and he converts. Tufts now leads 14 to eight over the NESCAC defending champions. And you 6.46 to go in the third quarter. You gotta admire um, Holder John Andre's patience. I mean, he got that snap, kind of a horizontal orientation that the ball was in and had you know the wherewithal to correct it and uh, leave, it, leave it in a good position uh, for the extra point. Trinity, the three-time defending champions so far. Nine titles in total for the Bantams. They've been the most prolific program in the NESCAC since 2000. So and now Al Swanger on for the kickoff. So in kind of a Patriots fashion, will we see the Bantams turn it on in the most desperate of times? They're looking at an eight-point deficit Time winding down, trying to uphold their, their stature as a, as a NESCAC power. That's going to be a fair catch for Devontae Reed, and that's going to bring it up to the 25, thanks to those kickoff rules we were discussing earlier. Devontae Reed with a fair catch on the kickoff for Trinity. So, Trinity's going to get it on the 25-yard line to start this drive. Of course, you cannot count Trinity out they were very close to scoring before on their last drive before that missed the missed field goal and before that the tackles that took them out of an easy field goal range absolutely and let the jumbos be reminded that they were up 14 nothing in that first half got 30 unanswered points scored against them so no lead is a given against these bantams yeah never count them out jumbos have learned that before i think there might have been some movement on the line I'm going to delay the game, huh? Yeah. Play clock does look like it's at zero, so looks like they'll be moving back a five spot. Yeah, you don't want to see that if you're Trinity trying to answer back the jumbos, and on your first snap, you don't even get the ball off. So first, actually, they're going to call it second and 15. should be first and 15. Is That's going to be a run for Spencer Lockwood. Going to get about three. And now the down counter is reset. And I'll be curious to see if Lambert puts it through the air. I mean, confidence was certainly gaining on the last drive. And, you know, seeing that they're, you know, two and long away, um, let's see if he makes some movements through the air. Yeah, Cody Schofer has been making him pay through the air thus far today. They're going to run it, and it looks like that's going to be for a loss as Lockwood loses a couple on that play. Kisuming, I believe, was involved. Jones on the stop for the so he had a defensive Jones. back come up there and make the tag. We were talking about this before, the aggressiveness of the secondary um, to come up on those more outside runs has proven really effective for the Jumbos. Yeah, speaking of the secondary, we can see a couple of Jumbos, uh, Jumbo trainer and a Jumbo coach talking to Brandon Jones on the bench. Still doesn't look ready to enter this one. Jason and Dancy has been playing most of the snaps here. And it's going to be a sack for the Jumbo defense. Kevin Kisumbing with his second of the day. 
Lambert, the pocket collapsed, and it's the Jumbo D-line who's been making waves thus far. And I believe Nenadovic came in there, uh, contributing to a half sack. Um, so great to see that the Jumbos will be put in great field position uh, after this punt. Punt on for McDonald. He's been good on the day. And that's a horrible kick. It's going to go out at the 37-yard line of Trinity. I think that was a 25-yard punt. And that sets the Jumbos up with excellent field position. It seems like there could be no more momentum on Tufts sides. Let's see how they take advantage. Tufts has a chance to really put some distance between them and the Trinity Bantams right now. This is a big possession for both teams. And you know whose name we haven't heard a lot today besides the sack? Jimmy Cristiano. Actually, no, he has eight tackles. Never mind, he's not the problem. As Armstrong takes the side handoff and gains about three. Cristiano's been doing his job, actually. He has eight tackles on the day, four solo. But what do you think has been the issue for Trinity? I think it's been staying locked in. I mean, you see a lot of these, these plays as was you know just evidenced by the last one where Tufts doesn't get a huge gain. It looks like Trinity has the momentum in its favor, but then a big play, you know, namely namely carried out by a guy like and uh, Armstrong has uh, has led to you know the Jumbos really being able to dominate. Handoff goes to Sanders and he's going to pick up one. Going to make it a third down and six. So Trinity has a chance to really escape, escape this bad situation here. Going to be really crucial here for them to get the stop. The defensive backs, you know, you have all this talent on the on the D line. I think the one place that Trinity doesn't have this All Pro talent is in that secondary. So we're going to see Carroll probably try to sling it here. He's back, throws in the flat to. Andre, to Andre, and that's going to be for only about two yards. We're going to see what the flag is about, too. It looks like they may be pointing in the direction of Trinity, although I can't tell for certain. This is a big call. Holding on the jumbos. So tally up another one, a holding for the inexperienced Jumbo's offensive line. So rather than take a fourth and four, the Trinity Bantams and head coach Jeff Devaney are going to say, try again, Jumbo's. We're going to see, hoping that they can't get in a big fourth down situation here and that they'll have to punt. Sanders in the backfield as the third down back to his right. Carroll takes the snap. Cristiano is free. Sanders is going to be walloped for a five-yard loss. That's not the way the Jumbos wanted to do it. And in fact, from the place where that punt went out, the Jumbos have gone backwards almost 13 yards. Well, certainly a great, albeit risky move at the onset by the Bantams head coach to opt to accept that penalty and set the Jumbos back on that third down with the poor play. They now, uh, they now have fourth and 20, we punting away. That's gonna be Patrick Walsh to bring it back. He's had a nice day. Low kick, gonna bounce to Devontae Reed and he's going to be brought down at the 10 yard line. Great coverage by the Jumbo Gunners there. An interesting move by Reed. I mean, it, what, it didn't really cost him in the end, but not much of a not much of a return for what could have been, uh, you know, a risky play catching that with the Gunners basically right at him. Yeah, we were talking about how one of the big stars for this Jumbo team has actually been the freshman Walsh. When the punting numbers come in, we'll get you them. So six punts, 39.2 yards, and a 52 long, three inside the 20. Those are excellent numbers. In these tight games, it's always a field, field position situation. 
High snap for Lambert. He's going to run it himself. Read option there, and he's going to be brought down by number 90, Quinn Fay, the junior out of Darien. Good recognition by Fay to realize that they were going to go with the read option there and took the, direct, the correct option. Second and 10. Lambert back in the pocket across to Schobert, and that's going to be a broken tackle. Pushed out of bounds at the 18-yard line, so it's going to be a third and two situation for the Bantams. I've been impressed with how Schofer has found a lot of open spaces. Maybe the uh, jumbo secondary should keep more of an eye on him. So here's one of the big problems for Trinity today. They are one of nine today on third down, and they're going to be one of ten. Brought down for no gain is Lockwood. And now Trinity is going to have to punt unless they really want to go for it here with 1.11 left in the third quarter. It's a fourth and one for the Trinity Bantams on their own 19 yard line and they're going to punt. I think they make the right move. I mean, being within, being within the 20, um, even at these stages is, you know, is the right move to then punt it away. Yeah, well, if they don't get it, then that's basically within Allswanger's field goal range. It could be a two-possession game. McDonald back to punt again. Liner, and it's going to be caught by a diving John Andre at the 49-yard line. And the Jumbos will start once again in opposing territory. Andre's punt reception catch kind of remind me of a center fielder preventing a triple from going behind him. Uh, in the outfield, so great move to get the Jumbos in solid field position to start out this drive. I wish the website had average field position starting. I think that would be a really good stat to have because it feels like the Jumbos has ha have had it all game today. Oh, absolutely. See the freshman out there. Trevon Woodson is going to take the carry for a good five yards on first down. Down to the Bantam 44 yard line. You wonder if maybe there's some issue with Carroll right now with uh, Woodson going out there under center. Well, I guess in the shotgun, but occupying the quarterback position for a second straight play. All the Jumbos on the sideline have their hands up. I for guess they're the going to take quarter. a timeout. Oh, nope, it's the fourth quarter. Good call there. The Jumbos clearly loving it right now, being up eight points on the defending champions. The Trinity Bantam six, the Tufts Jumbos 14. 15 minutes left in this one. Despite the low score, it has definitely been a game to watch thus far. Absolutely, not to jump ahead, but if Tufts does end up securing this win, I mean, this bodes super well for the remainder of their schedule. I mean, you might you might have to think they're they're getting their hardest opponent out of the way with this game. They come out with a win, a big win to start the season here. I mean, it bodes super well uh, for them the remainder of the stretch. Of course, there still is an entire quarter left to play. Trinity is only down a score, so nothing is certain yet. But one thing is for sure: the Jumbos like the position they're in with the ball in their hands. Up eight on the 44 yard line. And one thing we were talking about, the concerns about Jacob Carroll hasn't really taken a snap yet in his career so far. Well, 13 for 22 and 176 yards as Padrini is going to try to get outside, not going to get anything there. Maybe a modest gain of half a yard. It's going to be about third and five again. And it looks like, although not the starting quarterback, it does look like Woodson is coming off limping with a with a left foot injury potentially. Hate to see it for the uh, for the young buck quarterback. Third down for the Jumbos. They're going to hand it to Padrini, and he is not going to get it. Only gets two yards, and that makes the Jumbos five of sixteen on the day on third down. 
So do the Fair Jumbos enough. maybe want to apply a little pressure, go for this on fourth down? No, really they're going to either take a timeout. I think they're taking a time. No, they're not taking a timeout here. Excuse me, they're going to punt. With how accurate Walsh's boots been, can understand. Walsh is back at the 45-yard line. Returner Devontae Reed around the 10. High kick, good one, and he's going to take the fair catch at the 11. So Walsh with his fourth punt inside the 20. He has really been a demon against this Trinity Bantam team. And going back to your observation about the, the differences in starting field position, for me, it feels like nine times out of 10, Tufts will get the ball somewhere around the 50, and the Bantams will get the ball somewhere around their own 10. So certainly Tufts has been dominant in that category. And it leads to a difficult setup for Lambert to try to put a dent in this, uh, in this deficit. First and 10 from the 12-yard line is the Trinity offense. He's gonna take it himself, and he's gonna get a lot of yards. Lambert has open field, he's past the 50, he's down to the 41 yard line, and that is the way you wanna start the drive if you're the Trinity Bantams. Who cares about opposing field position if you can get yourself within there in one play? An impressive sight, Lambert takes it into his own hands, he doesn't even need to use his arm to, to make up all that ground. Huge carry there for Lambert. Tufts DBs playing back. We'll see what happens. They're going to rule that at 46 yards on the carry. Lambert going to air it out, and that's going to be a very low throw. I think it was, I think they're saying it was partially tipped by the Jumbo D line. And I think the Tufts defense ends up lucky. Schofer looked like he was once again getting open on an in route, so heady play by, um, by the second level to get that tipped. Second and 10 from the 42. Lambert in the pistol now with Lockwood behind him. Spencer Lockwood, 15 for 39 on the day. And they're going to play action here. And he's going to be brought down by Robert Jones. Two-yard gain for... I'm sounding like a broken record, but these defensive backs are getting out to the flats with speed. And in this case, put... The, uh, put the Bantams in a third and long situation. Yeah, it's going to be a two yard reception for the fullback tight end, whatever he is, Joe Samuelman the third. As you were saying, Trevon Woodson limping on his right leg here. So two big leg issues for the Jumbos today. And now one for 10 is the Trinity Bantams. We'll see if they can make it two for 11. Lambert's going to go deep. He's got Reed open, but overthrew him. Devontae Reed was wide open on a corner route, and Lambert put too much sauce on it. He was. He almost had this look on his face like, can he get the ball to me any faster? And that could have led to the confusion that resulted in Lambert's overthrow. So the Trinity Bantams now are 1 for 11 on third down. That's the big reason why they're behind in this game so far. And as we talked in our preparations, that's not the kind of play you like to see out of a championship caliber team. And it's probably, uh, you know, in large part a result of this lead that the Jumbos have. Good punt here from McDonald. And that's going to be really good for the Trinity Bantams. They're going to get him on the half yard line. The gunner basically cradled that ball into his arms and puts the Jumbos nearly in safety territory. This is really, really dangerous for the Jumbos. If, if the D-line gets any push here, and of course we know that Cristiano and his other mates down there can get it. They're gonna have to be really careful about, that, about what they try here. It is the strength of their team, their D-line, so we'll see, what kind of, we'll see what kind of pressure they can apply. If you're Coach Savetti, what are you calling in such a precarious situation? Get all, the, get all the offensive linemen on board. Run the ball, run the ball. That's what they're gonna do, and Petrini is sacked in the end zone. That's gonna be a safety. Disaster for the Jumbos. 
as that defensive line does exactly what we thought it would, gets the push and stops Padrini. And that's gonna be two points for Trinity. Now down only six, 14 to eight score in favor of Tufts. And now we're about to see a safety punt come on for the Jumbos. So you could say in some ways that the Bantams made up for their missed extra point earlier in this game by adding two here. Uh, after the Jumbos had somewhat of a precarious starting field position. I don't know, maybe this is just hindsight being 2020, but I really thought that running the ball was the predictable thing to do there. It usually I would have liked to see a play action or something, at least a short pass to get them out, or something, anything besides running up the middle at the glut of that D-line. Right. I mean, judging by, by the effectiveness of Armstrong sweeps, that could have been in the cards, but... Oftentimes with the tradition, you get the predictable, and as a result, you get a safety. Yeah, that Jumbo whole line's been holding up pretty well today, but in one of the big moments, they did not. And now Allswanger actually going to do the safety kick at the 20-yard line. So back is Devontae Reed. He's going to get it at the 21. He's got a decent amount of room. He's past the 50, one man to beat, and Allswanger, the kicker, makes the tackle himself. Gritty play, love to see. You had some good blocks by the, by the blockers deeper in Bantam territory that set up that nice return. And Trinity with a touchdown and an extra point. And down basically for most of this game. Since 11.50 in the second quarter, they have trailed. They can take the lead with a touchdown and extra point here and have good field position to do so on the 39 of the Jumbos. They go four wide, likely looking to throw. We'll see what they do. Going to motion Devontae Reed. He's going to take the end around. He's going to be brought down! Jovan Nananovic. And I love it when these defensive linemen can just muster up one arm. And in this case, it was all that, all that was needed to wrap up Reed and bring him down for the loss. It's going to be a loss of four on the play. Second and 14 for Trinity on the Jumbo 44-yard line. Tyler Scales, the linebacker, in in coverage. Devontae Reed again on the screen. And Greg Holt and Michael Maghetto are going to wrap him up. Greg and Holt actually missed the initial tackle there. Maghetto was the man, man who did the work. And if it weren't for a heady block by Schofer, um, it looked like one of the it looked like one of the jumbo defensive backs was reading that play well and likely would have had the receiver in the backfield so, uh, for a loss. So fortunate to have gotten that um, that four or so yard gain. Back to the line of scrimmage are the Jumbos, Dom Borelli in street clothes trying to warm up the crowd here. Third down, they're one and 11 on the day. Been really rough down for the Trinity Bantams here. They really would love a conversion. Lambert, there's pressure on him. He's gonna roll out, he's gonna take it himself and that is going to be stopped short of the first down at the 30 yard line. Tackle made by number 46, John DeLuca from Rentham, Mass. And I was wondering how long it would take for some of those jumbo linebackers to twist their bodies around and realize um, that Lambert was coming their way. But fortunately, there was enough space to make that tackle before the first down. Yeah, Lambert has had an exceptional day on the ground. 12 for 85. And fourth and one for the Trinity Bantams. A crucial situation for both teams. Looking like they're coming with the snap. blitz. They're going to give it to Lockwood, and he is dropped for a loss. Jovan Nadonovic. He's made some plays today, and that might be the biggest one. A true game changer. Turnover on downs. One for 12 on third down, and now one for two on fourth down. And now the Jumbos will have the ball with 9.27 to go. Both teams have all their timeouts. 
Pedrini in the backfield. You'd want to choose some clock here. Pedrini going to take it, an awkward handoff, but he's going to get room, and he's going to go with a full head of steam down to the 42-yard line. They're going to mark him short by, actually, no, they're going to convert that one into another one. Going to be a first down for the Jumbos, 10-yard carry for Mike Pedrini. And it was shocking. It was shocking to see that the Bantam linebackers weren't more on it, didn't have more jump on that running play. They should have expected it but kind of let Pedrini come to them. And as a result, the Jumbos got the first down. First and 10 on the Jumbo 42. Hand off again to Pedrini. He's gonna stop short and he's gonna be brought down by who else but James Cristiano. No gain on the play, gonna be second and 10. And it looked like the block by Dylan Daisy kind of dragged the defensive lineman with him and caused, or prevented I should say, what could have been a larger gain to the outside. Jack Donahue now in. Jay Tyler, the senior, 6'2", 225, is out. Second and 10. Trying to go for a lesser formation. They're going to hand off to Armstrong in the backfield, and he is going to get around, and is he going to get the first down? No, he's not, but he's going to be close. Eight-yard gain for O.J. Armstrong. Breaking tackles. And I feel like you rarely see this with teams, this strict divide of, you know, if the, if the run play is going to be anywhere between the tackles, it's Pedrini's job, and anywhere to the outside, rest assured, Armstrong's going to be sweeping around and taking that ball, hopefully shedding some tackles like he did there and coming up with big games like this. Armstrong, five for 21. They're actually gonna say he was out of bounds before the 50, so it's third and four from the 48. They're gonna blitz, and Pedrini is going to be brought down at the line of down, but there's going to be... Yeah, they're gonna, it seems like they might call a... Nope, no flag on the play. No gain on the play, it'll be fourth and four. So, running clock. Fourth down and four for the Tufts Jumbos, and they're gonna do the safe thing and bring on Patrick Walsh. The man who has doing, been doing it all day for Tufts. It's interesting to see games like this where punters can really have just such a big impact, and Walsh is certainly taking advantage of the limelight. Walsh booting it back, new returner this time. That's gonna be Colin. Colin, Colin Bolu. Bolu. Colin Bolu. Bolu with the fair catch for Trinity. They're gonna mark him at the 23. So not inside the 20 for Patrick Walsh. But a good punt nonetheless. Took a little less Actually, sauce off that one, but. Actually not that good of a punt from Patrick Walsh, only 29 yards. But Trinity still within their own territory on their own 23 yard line, first and 10 for this new drive. And Trinity's gonna have to convert on four, third down if they want a touchdown here. Lambert, he's gonna run to the outside and they finally bring him down. Rushing play is gonna lose yards for Seamus Lambert. Tyler Scales gonna make the tackle. He's gonna run off the field, holding his helmet in hand. And now he looks like he was just holding it that way. I think he got it stripped like the Natavik earlier. Second and 10 for the Bantams, no gain by Lambert. He's gonna be in the shotgun. Number three. He's gonna fake the handoff. He's gonna go out to who else but Jonathan Gerard? And he's gonna pick up the first down. We haven't seen Jonathan Gerard in a very long time. Absolutely, I think at this, at this stage in the game, um, the Jumbo defense is really challenging, is really challenging the quarterback to make throws by playing so far back. No huddle, Lambert's gonna throw very low, and he is upset with himself with his hands on his hips, saying, how did I throw that wide open man a worm burner? So I guess rightfully so that the Jumbos were welcoming a challenge by Lambert uh, because of a throw like that. 
It now results in second and 10. Yeah, Lambert is 14 for 24 on the day in his completions. One touchdown, one interception, 108 passing yards. It's second and 10 on the 40. I'm gonna fake it again, play action, and they're gonna bring him down. Big day so far for Jovan Nadonovic. If I'm not mistaken, that gives him three sacks on the day. Actually only going to be two sacks on the day because of the half sack. Tom Baker also credited with a half. To me, I'm surprised that Lambert didn't just take the safe route, especially with how he's been throwing, by throwing the screen to Reed. He was wide open, but uh, now we have third and long. Third and 13 on the 37-yard line. A lot of threes, and it's third down. He's going deep. Devontae Reed is going oh. to not make the reception. He had it in his hands for a moment, and then it was jarred loose. Jason Adonsi jarring that ball out of his hands. Reed is down. He was on one knee, and now he's on his right side in a lot of pain. He went down hard. He was definitely airborne for a moment. Going down on that right side, you'd hope it's not a shoulder thing, but that might be what it is. Right, it looked like he was well on his way to securing that ball and unexpectedly faced the wrath of so, Jason Adonsi. I've been calling out the third down numbers, and if you've been following along with my repetition, the Trinity Bantams are now one for 13 when the down marker shows three. Can't say that's a great percentage. And they have 5.20 left to go on the clock. Fourth and 13 for the Bantams. Devontae Reed is going to walk off under his own power. However, is this a do or die situation for Trinity, Max? Well, I think they're doing the right thing by punting here. But yeah, I would say they almost definitely need to stop if they want to have any chance of coming back in this game. All three timeouts for Trinity, all three for Tufts. McDonald back for his eight, ninth punt of, the, punt of the day. That's going to be a, a bouncer that's going to stay inside. Really good bounce there to keep it from going out of bounds at the 29. Rinds up at the 21. Kind of took a curvy route to the return man. He couldn't get it. Um, so we end up with the ball at around the 20. Jumbos are huddled now. They need to ice this game. 5-11 to go on the clock, as you can see on your screens. And the Bantams have all three timeouts. I would think, though, they would let some time wear off before they start using them. But if Tufts keeps running the ball, they want to try to put on the pressure by making a stop and then getting the ball back with a little more time. Maybe they opt to do that, but uh, certainly a big drive here. Jumbo set here for the Jumbos. They're going to pitch to Pedrini. He's going to cut, and he's not going to get much. No gain for Pedrini, maybe a loss of one. That box was loaded. So no surprise to me that that was a very short gain, if any gain at all. They're going to give it no gain for Pedrini. His numbers on the day, 23 attempts for 66 yards so under three yards per carry for the junior back second and 10 on the 21 for tufts formation is tight carroll back to pass and he is going to avoid the rusher he's going to signal someone out and he is going to he was either out of bounds or he threw it incomplete at the feet of Pedrini. Either way, it's basically going to be around the same point. Number 33 for Trinity, Daniel Negron almost took him down there. That would have been huge for Trinity, but they can still have a huge moment here. They're going to mark... I believe they're going to mark him with one yard loss there, Carroll on the play. Tufts, five of 17 on the day on third down. He's gonna roll out and fire it. Roche, is it complete? No, it is not. Too low, but a flag comes in late. 
We're going to see if that's pass interference as Roche was hit from behind when trying to catch it. Well, like Roche did a nice job of, you know, setting up that inner position kind of like a, a rebounder will do in basketball. So you might have seen the equivalent of an over the back uh, with, one of the, with one of the Bantam defensive backs. Pass interference. There that's going to be on number 25, Mike Pat, Matt Patry, excuse me. And they play, you run that comeback, you never know what kind of uh, aggressive play the defensive back is going to take that then results in, that then results in uh, the pass interference call. Uh, some of the crowd just uh, getting a Jets ch oh, chant yeah. going. Can't say we're having the greatest season so far, but. That's uh, okay. Sam Darnold like will come back from mono. But Jumbos trying to make sure that there's no comeback here and a collision in the backfield. Lucky for them, it only winds up as a one-yard gain. That could have been really disastrous if someone had fumbled the football. Absolutely. He recovered well, got the ball to Petrini, and picked up a modest one, two-yard gain. Yeah. So that actually, with the penalty, that makes the Jumbo 6 of 18 on third down. So a better percentage than I think you see uh, with Trinity. Well, I mean, yeah, that, that is how numbers would work. Yes. And it looks like the Bantams are going to call their first timeout with 3.36 to play. Yeah, that, I don't think it can be said enough how fortunate it was that Jacob Carroll held on to the ball as he collided with Jay Tyler, the running back. Because that, that could have been stripped very easily. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, on their side of the field, um, you know, that could have led to the disaster of giving the Bantams good field position, uh, still within one possession. Uh, but fortunately, they recovered and, and still have the ball and are at second and nine. So I guess during this timeout, we'll give you a couple of updates. Jumbo yards per play, not a great 4.7, but Trinity even worse at 4.1. 172 yards passing for the Jumbos, 108 through the air for Trinity. And rushing 109 to 131 Tufts to Trinity. Carroll looks to the sideline. He snaps it and gives it to Pedrini who runs outside. And he is not going to pick up much, maybe no gain. Maybe a yard. They're going to give him a yard on that carry. And it's going to be third and eight on the 37-yard line of the Jumbos. That was a rare outside run for Pedrini, and I guess with somewhat good reason, it didn't result in too, too much. Winton Blunt, the fullback, is going to motion off here. And Brendan Dolan going to come on, so a bit more of a lighter formation here. So they go five receivers here. Empty backfield for the Jumbos. Jacob Carroll is going to pass. He's back. Pass is, com no, incomplete, they say, to Armstrong. Not like it would have mattered much as he went great to the, right to the ground. I was still impressed by Carroll's decisiveness. I mean, it was a question of were the rushers, the really great rushers of the Bantams, going to get to Carroll first? Or was he going to get to that? Or was he going to get that ball off to one of the receivers? He did, but unfortunately, Armstrong did not hold up his end of the bargain, and it resulted in a drop. Yeah, Devin Perkins with good pressure on that play to force the quick throw from Jacob Carroll, and of course, one of our favorite players, as you've heard enough from this game, the one, the only Patrick Walsh on to punt at the 23-yard line. He certainly has more field to work with to hopefully get another punt inside of the 20. Long of 52 today, 36.6 average. Good boot. Colin Bolo yeah. back, and that is not going to be the greatest of boots as he's going to be down at the 31-yard line of Trinity. So not bad, actually. Sometimes you do need a little ball luck, and unfortunately that one didn't have a lot of bounce uh, heading in the direction of the goal line. So we get it at the 31. Decent field position for, for the Bantam starting out here. So Trinity getting the ball back again. Actually, they do have all three timeouts. I'm not sure what that stoppage of play was earlier, but 
Better for the Trinity Bantams. In that case, 239 to work with as they are on their 31. Pass complete to Lockwood and he is not going to pick up much. Maybe three yards there up to the 34 yard line. Interesting to see Lockwood run that flat. He hasn't really been much of a receiving option for Lambert, but nice to see him get involved. Second and seven. Back is Lambert. He's got a lot of time. He's going to be flushed and he's going to be sacked again. And who was it? Oh. Who just picked up his third sack of the day? Why don't you tell the uh, listeners? It's Jovan Nadonovic. A monster day for the man out of Washington, D.C. Only a sophomore, but he is making his impact felt. Seems like he's even getting some MVP chance. Defensive MVP of our day, it looks like. So, Trinity once again find themselves in their bugaboo. It is third down and 10. One for 13 on the day. Defense playing very conservatively on the third and long. And that's going to be Vazano back to pass. And that is picked. The ball is picked. That's going to be Miles Ship. Jordan Vazano in for one play and one interception. A terrible throw. Missed him wide left. And Miles Ship getting all the hugs on the sideline. It looked like he was the one running the route. Absolutely. Nice and easy for our lone returner in the secondary, I believe. So they take out Lambert, I presume for the arm. Hasn't really thrown a good deep ball all day, and it ends up backfiring on him. What heartbreak for Trinity, as the Jumbos have 141 left in the game. Two timeouts for the Bantams. Seems like within the next couple of plays, we'll be getting a victory formation. Can't say that yet. Pedrini is dropped for a loss by Cristiano and company. I believe it was Daniel Negron in as well. Yeah, just an update. Finally, the system came through. That is three, count them, three sacks for Jovan Nadonovic. Second and 11 for the Jumbos on their own 34-yard line. Timeout called by the Trinity Bantams. They have one left. 1.38 to go. So if Nadonovic is your defensive MVP, who's been the offensive MVP, Trevor? You know, I think coming out in your first game and doing this to what was statistically last season the best defense in the NESCAC, you got to give it to Jacob Carroll. No, absolutely. Didn't play, Stats have been played clean. one snap the entire game or the entire season last year, and he comes out 13 for 23, 173 passing yards and two touchdowns. Phenomenal effort from the senior quarterback. Certainly. And you got to think in no less part, the uh, young offensive line for holding its own and giving Carroll the time he's needed to make these throws. Well, we can't bury this game just yet. Still got a little, a decent amount of time. If Trinity can get a good stop here, they're going to get back in the backfield and a huge loss as O.J. Armstrong is smashed by Devin Perkins. O.J. Armstrong will carry for the Jumbos. He's going to lose a lot. It seems like after the third or fourth time, that Tufts has run that jet sweep that the uh, the Bantams finally had a jump on it and were able to attack him in the backfield. Loss of five on the play and only five seconds elapsed on that play as well. Third and 15 for the Jumbos. And hold on a minute because the Trinity Bantams still have a lot of life here. Could not have asked for a better start to this drive for Trinity to... Um, to get the ball back with a decent amount of time to try to get into the end zone for a victory. I mean, Carroll has, you know, confused them a lot today and been pretty on the mark, but in obvious rushing situations, you remember the safety in the end zone. 
That was when they got penetration. They're getting penetration. Basically, Devin Perkins was unblocked on that play. Two jumbo, two Trinity Bantam rushers were unblocked on that play. They are struggling in obvious rushing situations right now. And, of course, an incomplete pass right, and would you not be good. And you alluded to the predictability of Padrini being that up-the-gut rusher and then Armstrong coming to the outside. Trinity has finally been able to pick up on that. Third down and 15. Under center, they're going to pitch to Padrini. He's going to try to get outside, and he falls on his own O-lineman, Dylan Daisy, partially bringing him down. And that's only going to be a carry of about three yards. So fourth and 12 for the Tufts Jumbos. And they're one of their... I'd say one of their MVPs today, Patrick Walsh. This is the biggest snap of his young career. Absolutely. It looks like they'll get the ball off at around 45 seconds. So there'll certainly be enough time for a few plays for Trinity to execute, but not a ton of time, especially without any timeouts remaining. It looks like they're going to set up the new return man, Colin Bulu. Excuse me, Bolu around the 30 yard line. That's where they're expecting the kick from Patrick Walsh. But as I was saying, cannot, can never count out the Trinity Bantams. And this is why. They, they're not in the most favorable of situations, 46 seconds, and the Tufts Jumbo secondary has really played phenomenally today. But they still have a shot. The question is who's gonna be taking snaps for them? because as we said, through the air, Seamus Lambert has not been the guy for most of the day. 15 for 26, 111 yards, one touchdown and one interception. And Jordan Vazano came in, the starter for most of the beginning half of last year came in and immediately throws a pick. But it seems like he's got the better arm. So it's all gonna be on Walsh for now though. Set up at around the 19 yard line, they're gonna Call a flag offsides on the Trinity Bantams. I believe it's actually a false start by Tufts. I saw some pointing in their direction, but we'll have to see for well uh, for when the official makes the call. Yeah, it looks like I was the one who jumped the gun as well. Well, you can understand from Tufts' perspective, uh, being pinned fairly far back and having the punt block formation by Trinity, uh, the the sort of I don't know, this sort of possibility of feeling a little anxious uh, might have resulted in that. Yes, yeah, so they're going to call that on Tufts. So they're going to say they need to reset the game clock here. One second has ticked off. So, hey, every second counts when you only have 46 seconds. So Absolutely. And what you mentioned before with Zano, I think it's fairly likely you see him in the game. They need to cover a lot of ground. Uh, Lambert hasn't been super predictable with, uh, or super able to make some of the longer throws. And this being one of the biggest apex points, I think, of the game, this punt by Patrick Walsh, they're going to take a timeout and think this over. Just to get everything set, just to get the game plan, probably, for how they're going to defend either Vazano or Lambert, whoever it is who's taking snaps for them. Because let's not forget, although they haven't really been that much featured today in this game, partially due to the instability by Lambert. Kobe Schofer and Jonathan Gerard still combined for 1,800 yards and 19 touchdowns last year. They are no slouches. And as we saw in that first touchdown, Jonathan Gerard has a, he has a very large frame. And they can get separation. And with that experience in these you know, in these close situations, look for them to figure big. Walsh, a nice ball, but we're gonna see where it goes out of bounds. They're gonna mark it out. This is big. At the 37 yard line of Trinity. 44 seconds on the clock for the Bantams. Play over the course of these past five minutes, it's been a wave of feelings for Jumbo fans. After that pick, 
Um, you thought everything was all secured, but after a short drive, the last go around by the Jumbo's offense, Trinity finds itself with the ball in a position to score. And it is not the rookie of the year, Lambert. It is Vazano under center. On the 37-yard line of Trinity, Vazano drops back, throws it low, but caught by Lockwood. And that's going to be a gain of about 10 yards, but Trinity's going to have to hurry. 37 yards. Must 36, be someone likely 35. to see a spike here. Yeah, they're going to spike it. So second and 10 on the 48-yard line of Trinity. The crowd is on their feet. In formation, it's Foster, Reed, Grant, and Schofer. Lozano back in the shotgun. He's going to get the pass. Deep drop. He's going to fire for the end zone. Ship in coverage. And it's going to be knocked away by Schofer, in fact. It looked like Ship was the one tracking the ball as he was ahead. Good play, actually, by Schofer to know when he was beaten to knock it away. And great play by Ship to stay in coverage and prevent a touchdown. Always interesting to see when the wide receiver turns into the defensive back. Uh, some heady play by Schofer to at least sort of keep this drive alive. The second play we've seen by Ship of that sort. The first was on his interception. Third and 10, third down. They are one of 14. Vazano back deep. He's gonna fire and it is gonna be caught by Schofer. A huge gain. He is down to the 18 yard line. There's a flag on the play though. This is big. Could it be holding? He had a lot of time in the pocket. Schofer ran a beautiful post route, but it almost begs the question of having, of having that much time, whether there might have been some holding. That's on Tufts. They're moving yep. the chains down the field to the 17 yard line. And they're going to add yards to that. So it looks like there might have been a personal foul there as someone's helmet got knocked off. So this is great field position. First and goal from the nine for the Trinity Bantams with 18, 16 seconds to go. They can win this game. They've been down since 11.50 in the second quarter. Vazano in the shotgun. Can he gain his job back? That's going to be up and too high for Jonathan Gerard. Second down and goal. 11 seconds left. It was a little two-on-two -two battle. Can't really say Ship got the better of Gerard because the pass sailed over Gerard's head. But nonetheless, Tufts defense stands strong for yet another play. I think that that was a little to the right and a little down. I think that might have been a touchdown for Trinity. Mazzano's got to be accurate here if he wants this touchdown. Touchdown and extra point wins it for Trinity. Second and goal from the nine. Vazano is back. He's firing. He's under duress. He's going to make a man miss, but he's brought down from behind. John DeLuca, the junior. And that's going to be the end of the game. There's no timeouts. And the Tufts Jumbos have upset the Trinity Bantams. 14 to 8. What a win. Who could have seen it coming? An all new O line. Trinity with the rookie of the year, a new quarterback. But it was the Jumbo D line, the new Jumbo quarterback. And of course, the Jumbo defense that played so well in the red zone last year. And they do it again. The game saving tackle by John DeLuca. And the Tufts Jumbos win it 14 to eight over the defending champion, Trinity Bantams. And that is big because head to head advantage is how Trinity won last year. Now, Tufts has the advantage. Max, what do you have to say? No, I think as you as you alluded to, it was a very fitting end to that game with the sack by DeLuca and the fact that it was his first one. Although Nanadovic dominated on the defensive line, it shows they're getting all hands on deck and it means a really promising season to come for that defensive line, for the team at large. So 
a really, a really great start. Nice to see the baby blue overtake the gold here and assert themselves as potentially top dogs in this competitive NESCAC conference. So next week, Tufts will go to Williams. We won't have that game because we don't, we don't, uh, we don't travel. But you'll get it on the Williams broadcast on the day. Here are the reports from the schedule. We will get that up for you in a second. So in terms of football today, Williams right now, the next, the week two opponent for the Tufts Jumbos is leading Middlebury 13 to 10. Middlebury is at home. Tufts of course has won today, upsetting Trinity 14 to eight. Hamilton defeats Bowdoin 37 to 24 in Brunswick, Maine, the home of Bowdoin. Amherst, sizable win for them over Bates, 27 to 13, and Wesleyan crushing Colby 30 to 10 in Middletown, Connecticut. So in terms of who they're tied with, right now on top, it's going to be Tufts, it's going to be Hamilton, and it's going to be Amherst, and it's going to be Wesleyan, and we'll wait to see on the Williams-Middlebury game. That game, of course, will be at 1.30 p.m. at Williams. You can get the link on the video, but we'll let you guys go. What a fantastic win for the Tufts Jumbos, and what an exciting finish. You didn't think it would get to this point. Tufts has led all game, but they still had Trinity in it, almost by Vazano, and he was tackled behind by John DeLuca. So that's gonna be it from us. Of course, thank you to my partner, Max Goldfarb, a wonderful job on his first football game ever. I'm Trevor Russo, hopefully you'll hear more from us throughout the season. You'll see Jumbo Cast on the 28th against Amherst, we'll be at home. So look out for that. Thank you all for tuning in. It's been a wonderful experience to do this game with you all and we'll see how the rest of the season goes. But right now, this is a good start for the Tufts Jumbos. Thank you.